I feel good this morning. I feel like teaching this morning. And I want to call your attention this morning to 1 Peter. And I, I, I chose it because I, you know, sometimes when you ask questions and things, you might not want the answer that you ask for. So I was sitting down and I was talking to the yeah, teacher. I was sitting down there last night, I was talking to my wife, and, and I said to her, you know, sometimes your wife can be the most critical one about you. And I said to her, I said, hey, baby, I said, I'll just try to be nice to you, you know. And I said, hey, baby, I said, do you think that I'm, I'm peculiar? She said, yeah. You know, and she, you know, you know what? And she didn't even give me a chance to tell her why I was asking her that. And she just came right out and said, you know, yeah, you peculiar. You know, so I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to treat you about then. You know. So I want, I want to talk to you this morning from, uh, from uh, 1 Peter, chapter 2. And I want to talk to you with this, from, with this, with this title. But first, I want to look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. The Bible says here, uh, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that has uh, exalted uh, that, I'm sorry, that ye should show forth the praises of him whom has, whom has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want, with that scripture in mind, I want to talk to you from this subject this morning, a peculiar people. A peculiar people. I, I, when I talk, when, when I was talking to my wife about this particular I, I was not talking to her from the standpoint of that I felt like that I was uh, peculiar because I am, you know. And all Christians ought to be <coughs> peculiar. Uh, and when we look at the word peculiar, uh, the word peculiar ought to be a word that stands out to us because it, it means that they agree that there's something strange or something odd. Uh, it might be something unusual or something weird about you know how people talk about that you have a weird feeling or you or you look weird or, or you talk weird or something like that. Or well, it means that there's something abnormal about you. In other words, you don't act the same way other people act. Amen. And see, as a child of God, there ought to be something different about you. What I'm trying to say to you this morning, my brother and sister, if you are a child of God <coughs> and you act the same way that the world acts, mm. what separates you from being a child of God? How does people know that you're a child of God if you act the same way they act? Right. If you go to the same places that they go to, if you even if you talk the same way and say the same thing that they say, what makes you know? What makes them know that you're a child of God? There ought to be something in your life that makes you different from the world. Mm -hmm. And I say to you this morning that there ought to be something out of the ordinary. You see, there was something about Jesus when he walked on the earth for 33 years that made him different from us. Well, we have obeyed the gospel of Christ, and we have truly uh, taken on Christ, and we have become a part of his body, we represent him. Amen. And my brother and sister, if you represent Christ, <clears throat> then you ought to live your life in such a way that the people see Christ in you. Come on now. If I live my life in such a way, that nobody ever sees Christ in me. How am I going to teach Christ to you? There ought to be something in my life that sets me apart from those that are on the outside looking in. There ought to be a weird way that I act in the 
want to put it. That makes people know that I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. If every time someone sees me, and I got my head down because I'm going through trial and tribulation, and I don't know how to pray to God, what makes them think that I can teach them how to pray? In, in First Peter, I want to show you something here. In First Peter, I want to look back at First Peter and begin with verse number one. And I want to notice here in chapter one, in verse number one. I want to look at how Peter introduces himself. Amen. In Peter, in First Peter, chapter one. Peter says here, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangest scattered throughout Pontus, Galicia, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Berkeley. You see, this letter that Peter is writing is not to a church. It's one of those letters that, that a letter such as First John. 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 2 John. Those are not written to churches. Those are written to people individually. Amen. And these Christians have been separated. Amen. Throughout different countries, throughout different lands. And what Peter is doing is he's writing a letter to encourage them. Amen. Because look at verses number two. It says, elect. And was chosen among according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, that grace unto you and peace be multiplied. And verse number three says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy Hmm. And begot us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, my brothers, so there ought to be some hope <coughs> in the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't understand what I'm saying here. My brothers and sisters, when we obey the gospel and we know exactly what the gospel is, it gives us hope in eternal life. It ought to be some hope in our life that gets us through from day to day to know that whatever I'm going through in life, that in the morning, that blessings come in the morning. When prayer goes up, blessings come back. Amen. My brother said, but we have to be in a situation where we can pray. Amen. See, everybody can pray. Amen. 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 There are people that can get out there and they can say a lot of words. Amen. But you see, you have to be in the body of Christ for Christ to eat. Or y'all don't believe what I say? Go on over there and get 9 John 9 31 if you, don't, if you think I'm joking with you. Go on over there and get it. The Bible says in John 9 31 that now we know that God is not what? Sin. Sin. And then what he goes on is say, but what? But him that be who? Worshiper. Do, do the what? The will do the will. The will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if a man be a worshiper of God. A who? A worshiper of God. A who? A worshiper of God. You mean to tell me that I got to be a worshiper of God for him to hear me? Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. So now if I'm not in the body of Christ, am I a
in other words, and 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 are undefiled, and their faith is not away, reserved in heaven. Amen. amen. What are you talking about here? He's talking about, amen, the hope that I have when I obey the gospel, amen. I got some something built up in heaven. You know, Dr. Bible said, my father's house, a men's mansion. Amen. In other words, I got a room. Up there. You want to go there? Amen. 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 If you want the room up there, you got to obey what the book says. Come on. Come on now. And then verse number six, it said, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So what? My salvation. In other words, my hope. <laughs> my eternal life. Amen. It reserved for me. But it ain't been revealed yet. It said it's going to be revealed in the last time. Amen. So, so now, if, if I got some a, a, a room up there, amen. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen. Now he has heard the thing that God has prepared for them that love him with fear. Amen. I know we've been a lot of beautiful places in our life. Amen. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of beautiful homes in our life. We, we probably travel a lot. Those of us that have been in the military have been all over the world, probably. Amen. I know I spent a lot of time in, in Fort Benning, in Georgia, Fort Polk, Louisiana, mm -hmm. in Vietnam, mm -hmm. Germany, places like that, uh, Denmark. Amen. But you know what? Out of all the houses I saw, the Bible said, eyes have not seen. Now he has heard the thing that God has prepared. You don't know how that meant it. You don't know about that streets of gold. Come on, amen now. Amen? Man, the Bible said that you that there's streets of gold. Amen? Now, Let's go on over here and let's look at our scripture. I, I know, I, I know, I, I, I'm trying to get you where I want you to be. In order for us as Christians to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, we got to remember what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1. Amen. In order to get to what you need to be in 1 Peter chapter 2. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verses number 1, the Bible says what? Chapter 1, what? See, in order for me, amen, to to uh to to rid myself uh, of all this malice, amen, and malice being intention or desire mm -hmm. to do evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. I gotta get rid of all of that mm -hmm. in my life. Amen. Mm -hmm. The desire that I have to do evil, I gotta get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what malice is, amen. A desire to do evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. it, it, it to do evil. Hostility. Our ill will, our ill feeling, our hatred. I got to get rid of all of that out of my life. Amen. If I'm intending to see Jesus on the day, on, 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 and, and day before him, and hear him say, well, no. Amen? Because I can't take none of that with me. Amen? Now, mm -hmm. the Bible says here, it says, therefore, rid yourself of malice, of all malice, and all deceit, <coughs> hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Uh, like new, newborn baby, go on over there about the region, go on over there and get for me Matthew. Amen. And, and, uh, in Matthew chapter 18, in verse number 3. While I'm reading this, get for me Matthew chapter 18, verse number 3. It says that I, like newborn baby, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may know that you may grow uh, up in your salvation. And then verse 3. Three said, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now look <laughs> at Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 3. He said, the baby, he talking about babies here. Now, eight, in Matthew 18, 3 says what? He said, Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. Except you be converted. And except you be converted. And become as, as little children. And become as what? Little children. You mean to tell me I got to come as a little child, be converted, and come as a little child? Why does Christ, why does he use a little child? 
Because if you got children out in the yard playing, amen, they get mad this minute, and guess what they're going to be doing next minute? They're going to forget all about what they were mad about. And they ain't going to even mention anymore about what they were mad about. Amen. If you hold in it, hatred in your heart, don't expect God, amen, to be a part of your life. Amen. amen. And the Bible says, if that you come as a little child, that means that you have to humble yourself. Amen. That's humility that comes, that a child comes. Amen. That a child has. Amen. <laughs> Children are not, are not hostile for birth. Amen. You ain't gonna have no child that got hostility from birth. Amen. They are taught that. Amen. And it starts in the family. Come on. And, and I also, I will say this too, my brother and sister in Christ. Children are not born pregnant. Amen. Children are not born hating other, other, other kids that's because of the color of the skin. Amen. Children that taught. Amen. We teach our kids. Amen. That's why my brother and sister, I tell my granddaughter all the time, be careful what you say around small children. Amen. Because children learn what they hear. Amen. Amen. And if you curse around your child, and then your child get out and start cursing, and don't get mad with that child. Amen. Because that child is he just saying what you say. Amen. So don't get mad with the child. Get mad with yourself. Because you taught that child for the sake. Amen. Amen. So in order for us to be true to God, we have to be humble to God. Amen. 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 I say in order to be, be true to God, you got to be humble to God. Amen. 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 The Bible says you got to come as a little child. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and look over here, it said, the living stone, and they told the people. In verse number four, it said what? And you come to him, what? Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as little children, uh -huh. the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If you humble yourself as a little child, <coughs> amen, you are great. Why? Because in order for you to be a humble person, it takes humility. Everybody can be on. Amen. It don't mean that you're weak because you're on. Amen. It means that you're powerful. The more powerful, the more power you have, and the more humble you are. Amen. 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 Look at God by going to the first people. <coughs> In First Peter chapter chapter two and verse four say what? So who coming as into a living stone, disallowed in need of men, but chosen of God and precious. Uh-huh. He said, and as let me read it. It said, and as you come to him, as who come? As we come to him. Amen. The living stone. But who is he talking about? Except you come to Christ. Christ is the living stone. Amen. It said, as you come, the living stone, respected by men, but chosen by uh, disrespected, respected, rejected by men, but chosen by God. Y'all know he, he died with Christ and followed the Christ the Son was rejected. You don't think he was rejected? He was rejected when he hanged on that cross. They, <coughs> they rejected men rejecting him. But he was chosen by God. Amen. And then he said, you also, like living stone, are being built into a spiritual house. My brother, don't you know that as a child of God that you are being built into a spiritual house? Amen. In other words, God is molding you the way he would have you to be. Amen. And, and, and just like a pot can take a piece of, a, a piece of pottery, and mold that pottery to what he wants that pottery to look like. Amen. God can take our God will take our life. When we become a part of his body, he will take our life and he will mold us the way he wants us to be. 
Amen. The people he wants us to be. How he wants that. That has to be molded us. And God molds us. Amen. In other words, he shaped us. Amen. And, and his life. Amen. He shaped us the way he wants us to be. And how he wants us to be. And what he wants us to be. Amen. Amen. If you want to be a true person, let God mold you. Amen. And when you are added to the body of Christ, that's when the moment begins. Amen. So you can't be molded like Christ, like Christ would have you be molded if you're not part of his body. Amen. You can't be molded. Amen. A, a, a potter can't mold a piece of pottery unless he first has the pot of pottery. It's an idea. Amen. Amen. Now look at the next verse. It says, you also like living stones are being, being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Offering spiritual. See, we don't we don't wear, amen, uh, a crown on our head. I know y'all remember not too long ago when they had that marriage, that big marriage overseas or whoever it was, that that, that, that uh, was that priest or uh, prince or whoever it was that got married, amen, and how they had that royal mar marriage and stuff like that, and they had all that stuff, all that different stuff that she had on, and they had a, 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 a shield and stuff on her head and everything. See, you don't see no more shield on my head. Amen. But God is molding me to his priesthood. In other words, you, he said you're royalty. You have royalty. You don't recognize the royalty, but Jesus knows who you are. Amen. So God is molding you the way, he, the way he wants you to be. And he's molding you to his royalty. Amen. Because in order for you to be a part of his kingdom, there has to be some royalty there. Amen. Amen. And he has to mold you. Uh, and then he goes on to say, offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable. See, you can't offer anything to God, amen, if you're not a part of his body. Hello? Hello? I say you can't offer anything to God if you're not a part of his body, amen. What can you offer him? Huh? If you're not a part of, part of the body of Christ, what can you offer him? Amen. In order for him to use you. Amen. You got to allow him to use you. And in order to allow him to use you, you must obey the gospel of Christ. It's just that simple. Amen. And then let's go down in, in verse number nine, say it. Verse number nine. Say, break ye. A what? A chosen generation. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. But God makes us royalty in order that he might use us. 
God wants to use all of us. Amen. But we have to be in a situation that God can use us. Amen. And now, if we say that uh, I'm, I, I'm to the point that I don't see it no more, amen, then you just told a fear. <coughs> amen. Because the Bible said all that have seen come short of the glory of God. But one thing about Christians is that they have prayer power. And you can pray and God will forgive you for your sin. Amen. That's the difference between being a child of God and not being a child of God. Amen. Amen. So, and we all are a, a, a spiritual house. We are a spiritual house that God is molding to the specification. Amen. And when God will mold us and he continues to mold us from the time that we added to his body until the time that he takes us out of this life, he continues to mold us. Amen. To where he wants us to be. And if we are to be an example for Christ, we have to allow him to mold us like he was to be that we should be molded. Amen. And and when we get to the point that we don't want to be molded anymore, amen, then we don't need Christ. We don't have Christ in our lives. Right. My brother and sister, let's continue to do those things that be spiritual right in the eyesight of God. Because the Bible said that you're a royal priesthood. Amen. You have royalty. Amen. All of us have royalty as children of God. Amen. So let's do the very best that we can be. The very best people that we can be. So we can stand before God on the day of judgment. And we can hear him say, well done. That's good and faithful service. Amen. That's the lesson for today. Amen. There's royalty in us. Yes, we are all priesthood. May God bless you. And there might be somebody here. You need prayer for yourself. Oh Lord. Or you want to you need baptism. The water is ready, the clothes are ready. <coughs> the only thing that stands between you and baptism is you. Jesus in the Revelation says, I stand in the door and knock. If any man will open, I will come in and stuff with him. But God's not going to open the door. You have to open it for him. Amen. And how do you open it? You allow him. Amen. To break your heart. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. That, that's what happened when, when they asked they, they, when they asked me these things, men and brother, what must I do? It's because they were pricked in their heart. When Christ pricks your heart, you have to walk. And there ought to be a pricking in your heart. In other words, there ought to be something in you, if you have not obeyed the gospel of Christ, that wants you, that makes you want to become a Christian. Amen. There ought to be something in you. God bless you. Uh, if you need prayer for yourself, if, if, <coughs> if you just want to say, Lord, I just want to say thank you for another day in the land of living. Now is the time to make those requests. Now, let's together. Oh.